Please stand by. I'm a little early. Oh, yeah, we had a spring-like morning, and now it is overcast again. 51, though. I'll take it. And we're about ready to get started here. And good afternoon, everyone. It's time for Stratomatic Baseball. Boy, I got to tell you, I've got baseball coming out of my ears yesterday and today. I got the, the MLB streaming package through Roku because my TV doesn't have it. <clears throat> and uh, first to this morning, I spent probably an hour looking at box scores online. Got all kinds of 365 leagues. My Windows leagues, of two of them have already started. No, three of them have already started, and two of them sending out computer managers for my road games. Oh, yeah, just all kinds of Stratomatic and baseball going on. And greetings to Franklin and Kenyon and Jack. Hey, good to have you, fellas. I'll tell you what. It's a great day for Stratomatic Baseball. <clears throat> Excuse me, clear my throat. <clears> throat. This happens to me almost every day. I'm going along fine, and then I try to talk. Anyway, we've got the Cubs at the Astros today. Two teams at the opposite end of the standings. The Cubs come in at 6 and 12. The Astros 12 and 9. This is the final game of a three game series. These Cubs clubs rather split the first two. And today we'll have two right handers. Bill Fall, who's pitched mostly in relief, I think, so far this year. He'll get the start for Chicago. Turk Farrell, who you can see, was one of the primary victims of the coffee spill incident. We got to think of a clever name for that, like Watergate or something, you know, Coffee Gate. <laughs> Oh my God, that's perfect. That just popped into my head just now, I swear to God. Oh my goodness, yeah. Farrell was a victim of Coffee Gate. And, uh, <laughs> oh my God, neither of them with particularly good cards. We are in Houston. And, you know, I started to watch that. There's Kenyon, I started to watch that one and I fell asleep. I was winding down by, by the evening. Anything spectacular happened to that? I just looked at the box score. Mostly I'm looking for to see. It's interesting to see who's in the starting lineups and who isn't because we, you know, we spend a lot of time in these keeper leagues going over prospects in the winter. And you're thinking, oh, this guy is going to be great. And then here the season starts and he's not even playing or they send him back down to AAA for more seasoning, right? Or in the case of Noel V. Marte, you know, you take an 80 game perspent suspension for something totally stupid. Let's look at these pitchers in the replay. Fall's been in five games, one start, so this would be his second start. Four and a half ERA across 10 innings. Turk Farrell's been pretty good with a bad card. He's made two starts. He's 0-1, but with a very shiny 2.92 ERA across 12 and a third innings of work. 
So that's the starting pitchers. Let's see what else I've got for you. I guess we can get to the lineups. For the Cubs, Adolfo Phillips will be back in the leadoff spot, and he likes it up there. Becker back in the two spot. I don't know about that last game. I think DeRocher was experimenting with his lineup. He had, remember, he had Kessinger leading off and Becker down at the bottom. Billy Williams, of course, hits third, and Ron Sano cleanup. That never changes. Byron Brown and Wright bats fifth. John Bacabella will be at first base, hitting sixth. Randy Hundley, seventh. Kessinger back in the eighth spot, and Bill Fall, the pitcher, hitting ninth. The Astros in the field will have John Bateman catching Farrell. Jim Gentile is back at first base. Morgan Jackson and Aspromani round out the infield from second to third, with an outfield left to right of Lee May, Jimmy Wynn, and Rusty Staub. So with that, we are about ready to get going here. Well, there the sun's peeking through again. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Here's Adolfo Phillips now to lead things off. He comes in hitting 243, one homer, seven RBIs. And Farrell's ready to go into the windup and the first pitch of the game. That's going to be a 3-9 right-hander, and it's a high fly ball to deep left field. May drifting back to the wall. Gone! Adolfo Phillips with a leadoff home run. Oh, my, what a way to start out the day. Phillips' second home run of the season. Of course, this is only his 12th game played. For the Cubs, it's their 19th. Remember, he started the year with the Phillies. So for Phillips... A prodigious blast, and the Cubs are up one to nothing. And here's Glenn Beckert now. Beckert leads the club in hitting 390. No home runs, but six runs batted in. Farrell getting the sign from Bateman. The pitch to Beckert is a 5 2 right handed. It's a fly ball into left field. May patrolling, and he's got it one down. Anybody care to share any thoughts from opening day? Franklin, you were watching it. What do you got? <laughs> Here's Billy now. William is starting to heat up. Hitting 243, four home runs, and 11 RBIs. But as you probably know, most of that has come very recently. Farrell staring in now. Here's the pitch to Billy. It's a 5'11 left-hander. It's a grounder to first base X. That's going to be Gentile, a 3'18. As he ranges to his right, here's the play on an 18. He's got it, flips to Farrell, covering, and there's two down. 3-1-X is the play, two away, and here's Ron Santo. It certainly looked like the D-backs pitcher... Oh, God, why can't I think of names anymore? It's, it's, sometimes it's really frustrating getting old, although, as I like to say, it does beat the alternative, right? <laughs> the guy who was so good in the postseason. Oh, my God, I can see his face. Two down, nobody on. Here's Santo. Ron Santo comes in at 302, three home runs and nine RBIs. It'll come to me. Here it is on a 210. Fly ball into right field. Staub is right there to make the catch. And that will retire the side. But a leadoff homer by Adolfo Phillips puts the Cubs on top one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. Why can I not th why can't I think of names anymore? It's bad enough, the rookies, but I mean, this guy's a veteran Cy Young, perennial Cy Young candidate. Oh, my goodness. Well, somebody's going to have to help me out with that one. We go to the bottom of the second. I'm going to be so PO'd when I hear who it is. The bottom of the second, Joe Morgan. To lead it off, Morgan, 278, one homer, eight RBIs, his 21 runs scored among the league leaders. Bill Fall gets the sign.
And here's Christian Morgan. It's going to be a 6-6 six, six to the left. You get Tapper to second. Becker to Bacabella. One down. Thank you, Ken. You know, yeah. It's, duh. That's all I can say to that. Zach Gallon. Thank you. Do you guys ever do that? I mean, it's an age thing, totally. I saw Burns. He looked really good. Here's Sonny Jackson now. Jackson hitting 302. No homers, three RBIs, 13 runs scored. Left handed hitter. Here's the pitch from Bill Fall. It's a 2 7. Base hit into right field. Sonny Jackson's aboard and he's got wheels. Star 19 Steeler. Fall, a very good hold, though, a minus four. Hunley, a zero, so he'd be a 15 knot hill. They'll have to hold him on. That would make him a 13, so that will deter him a little bit, maybe. And here's Jimmy Wynn. Wynn, one of the leading hitters in the National League, batting an even 400 with six home runs and 21 RBIs. All three of those numbers place him among the league leaders in those categories. And here's Fall now working from the stretch. The pitch to the toy cannon. That's going to be a 5-10 right-handed. Grounder to shortstop X. This could be two. Kessinger, a 2-E-40. Here's the play. It's a 10. That'll be the E rating. An 11 on a 40. He boots it. Error on Kessinger. Hang on, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That isn't true. E40. Eleven, he makes the puts a double play. I beg your pardon, how anticlimactic. I'm so sorry. A 643X. Nice play by Kessinger to retire the side. No runs ahead and nobody left on. I'm looking at a couple of things here. First of all. I think I'd like to see this dice tray come forward a little bit. Or maybe not. Maybe it's better back. I'm, I'm, excuse me while I screw around with this. No, I don't definitely don't like that. We'll put it right in the middle. I like to see him come down the chute, but there's no way I can get that angle with this camera. That's about as good as I can do. And you think he pitched lousy, huh? I thought he looked pretty good. Here's Farrell now getting ready to go in the second. Byron Brown to lead it off for Chicago. Brown comes into the game at just 184. Two home runs, four RBIs. Oh, I should add, I might be confused. Well, there, <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> Steve might be confused. Alert the presses. <laughs> Are you referring to Gallon or Burns? Here's the pitch to Brown. That's going to be a 2-9 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. Brown down on strikes. Oh, we're just having too much fun here. Yeah, I've got uh, Phillies and Braves on the screen right now. Sound muted. Here's John Bacabella. Bacabella comes in at 190. No homers, one RBI. He's only been in five games. Four for 21. Farrell with the line. Back. The pitch to John is a 4-7 right-handed. That's going to be a base hit into right field. So Bacabella reaches out and lines one into right. And he's aboard with a one-out single. Oh, now that makes sense. Yeah, it was Burns I thought looked pretty good. Like I say, I was falling asleep in my recliner by uh, 
by the time the Arizona game came on. And here's Hunley, one out, one on. Hunley comes in hitting 258, three home runs, and his 13 RBIs leads the ball club. Farrell from the stretch. 6-11 to Hundley. That's going to be a base hit into left field. It's an open single. Mays in left, a plus one to third for Bacabella. No way. He'll hold up. And the Cubs have runners on. First and second, one down. And here's Kessinger. Don Kessinger hitting 263. No home runs, two RBIs. Switch hitter batting left. Farrell in a bit of a jam here now. Stares in to get the sign. Now working from the stretch. That's going to be a 3-7 to Kessinger against a right-hander. It's a lazy fly ball into right. Staub settling under it. And he'll make the catch. Two down and the pitcher will bat. Bill Fall, a right-hander. One W. So Farrell looking to get out of this inning now, and here's the pitch to fall. It's a 3-8, swung on, and missed strike three. Not all that surprisingly. Two Ks in the inning for Farrell. No runs, two hits, two left. And it's still a 1-0 ball game. As we go to the bottom of the second. Yeah, 90 and 5. Wow. That does seem high. What should it be? They say about 15 an inning. So he should have, if he was pitching efficiently, he should have had about 75 in that in five innings. So in other words, he threw six innings worth of pitches in five innings. Yeah, and Kenyon, the ball, that ball and strike count, not impressive. He's a nibbler, though. I mean, he's a control pitcher. It sounds like he did not have his good command last night. And for Gallon to be effective, he absolutely has to have that. Here's Jim Gentile to lead off the bottom of the second for Houston. Gentile comes in at 267. No home runs, but nine runs batted in. The Astros, as a team, lead the National League in runs scored. Fall into the line deck. It's going to be a 6-4 to the lefty. It's a grounder to third base X. That'll be Aspermani. Aspermani, a slick fielding third baseman, 2-E-18. And here's the play on a four. Diving stop by Aspermani. Oh, my God. He's up, long throw across, just in time. What a play by Aspermani. Oh, ho, that's going to go down as a web jam. 5-3-X, exclamation point. And that's the first out of the inning. Lack of speed on the part of Gentile may have helped him out a little bit on that one. And here's Rusty Staub. Staub comes in batting 320. No home runs, but 16 RBIs, which would place him among the league leaders in that category. Here's the pitch from Fall. That's going to be a 5-8 left-handed. Grounder to second base X, little Joe Morgan. No, 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 no. Excuse me, that's Becker to 2-E-26. To his left, here's the play on a 6. Nice stop, throws him out. Nice play, Becker. 2-X play is to start off the bottom of the second. I remember back in the day, a, a pitcher who wasn't, a starting pitcher who wasn't pitching that day would chart pitches for the other guy. I'm not sure they paid much attention to how many he threw. Here's Aspermani. He's only hitting 198, but three homers and 11 RBIs as Fall goes into the windup. Pitch to Bob is a 6-10 right-handed, swung on and missed strike three, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Bill Fall. We're through two at the Dome. It's Cubs one, Astros nothing. And this game starting off like so many of them do. Pitcher's duel. Of course, we know they don't always end up that way. 
Farrell getting loose for Houston. Top of the order for Chicago. Adolfo Phillips, who led off the game with a home run to left. Farrell staring in now. Gets the sign from Bateman. Here's the windup. And the pitch to Phillips. It's a 5-8 right-handed. Grounder to shortstop. Jackson, two genteel, one away. Here's Beckert now. Glenn Beckert flew to left his first time up. Leading hitter on the ball club. Farrell into the windup. Pitch to Becker to 5-6 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. And for Farrell, that's his third strikeout of the game. Two out, nobody on, and here comes Billy. Billy grounded to first in the first inning. Farrell staring in now. Here's the windup. The pitch to Billy Williams. It's going to be a 2-5 base hit up the middle. So Williams with a single. Runner on first, two down, and that'll bring up Ron Santo. Santo flew to right his first time up. Farrell staring in now from the stretch. Delivers to Santo. 3-7, he walks him. Williams down to second, runners at first and second, two outs, and here's Byron Brown. Brown struck out his first time up. Farrell trying to get out of the jam here. From the stretch, the Brown is a 3-6 right hand, and he walks him to load the bases. Can you believe it? Farrell gets the first two outs of the inning quickly, and then a single followed by two walks. And the Cubs have loaded the bases here in the third inning. And it'll be up to John Baccabella, who singled his first time up. Baccabella standing in now. Farrell, big deep breath, full wind up. The pitch a 2-8, tapper to short. Jackson has it, short way to Morgan, and that will do it. No runs to hit. They leave the bases full, and it's still a one to nothing ball game. And there's Larry. Welcome, Larry Harris. Great to have you here, guys. I do appreciate it. I've gotten some really nice comments and even a couple of nice emails lately, and I have to say, I, I'm I'm humbled. I really am. This really has worked out. Overall, I'd say better than I expected. Well, definitely better than I expected, but I have to qualify that with, honestly, I wasn't expecting much when I started streaming. Took me about a month to figure out how to do it. A couple of weeks, anyway. Here come the Astros in the bottom of the inning. Fall ready to work. Lee May will be leading it off. May, of course, with that big pinch hit home run. Was that the last game? It feels like it was. That was just recently. May comes in hitting 254. Three home runs, nine runs batted in. Fall gets the sign. The pitch to May is 6-9 left-handed. It's a high fly ball to right. It's a 7. That's going to be down into the corner. May around second. Brown's got it. Throws in, and May is in with a leadoff triple. So Lee May's been hot lately. Game-winning walk-off homer just recently, and now he triples. Third inning. Bottom of the order coming up. Seems to me too early for the infield in, although it is a close game. I'm going to let the dice decide. I can't decide. One to three is in. 
It'll be back. That's kind of where I was leaning anyway. And here's the pitch to Bateman. 6-5 right hand, and he pops him up left side. Infield fly rule. Kessinger has it. And there is one down. And here comes the pitcher, Farrell. Farrell, a decent hitting pitcher, a 6 and right-handed hitter. Let's see what he is for bunting. He's a D bunter. So a pretty good hitter, but a poor bunter. Imagine that. Well, let's see what happens here. I'm going to roll the dice again, in or back. One to three, it's in. It'll be in this time. I was leaning that way, too. The dice are with me today. Infield in for the pitcher. That's going to be a 5-7 right-hander and a triple to five. We're on a 12. That's going to hang up in center for Phillips. That's going to be deep enough for May to tag up and score. And that'll be a sacrifice fly for the pitcher. And we got a tie ball game. So Turk Farrell picks up an RBI. It's 1-1, one, one, two down. And here's the leadoff man, Little Joe. Morgan Grounder to his counterpart the first time up. Fall into the white. Here's the pitch to Little Joe. It's a 4-10. High fly ball to right. Brown backing up just shy of the track pulls it in. And that'll do it. One run, a hit, nobody left. After three complete at the dome, it's a 1-1 one, one tie. I don't know, this feels like deja vu all over. The last Cub Astro game. I might have to look that up. Let's take a look here. I'm pretty sure that was the one... Sure it was. Yeah, there it is. The pinch hit home run by Lee May. Well, that was a drama game. Three in the top of the ninth for the Cub. The Astros came back with two. Hunley with the three-run homer in the top of the inning. Lee May in the bottom. And it started off two to one through three, so not quite the same. But similar. Sorry about that. I had to check it. As we go to the fourth. Bottom of the order. Hundley, Kessinger, and Fall. Farrell ready to work. In a 1-1 ball game. Hundley standing in. He singled his first time up. Farrell into the one. To Hundley. That's going to be a 6-4 right hand, and it's deep fly ball to left. May backing up. On the track makes the catch. So Hundley gave it a ride. It stayed in the park. Astrodome, as you know, a very difficult park to hit one out of. One down, and here's Kessinger. Kessinger 0 for 1. Farrell gets the sign now. The left-hander. Kessinger batting left, I should say. The right-hander deals to the left. 6-6. Six, six. That is a high fly ball to right field, but Kessinger's a weak. So that's going to be in for a single. 6-6. Six, six. Homer to 5, it's a 4. Kessinger will settle for a long single. In Kessinger's case, he'd have been better off to roll the 6 through 20. He could have had a double. He's a star 15, however. Farrell a minus one. Bateman a zero. I'd make him a 14. They're going to have to hold him on, making him a 12. And here's the pitcher, Fall. Fall, not a good hitting pitcher. He's also a D butter. He's going to lay it down anyway. Three on a D. Successful sacrifice bunt. So Fall gets the job done. Kessinger into second. So Kessinger in scoring position, two down, and here's Adolfo Phillips now. Phillips one for two with a home run. Farrell checks his runner. Here's the pitch to Phillips. 
to seven. He walked in. Ball four. Oh, my. Farrell had about a wild miss last inning. And here's Glenn Beckert. Beckert 0 for 2. Came into the game hitting 390. Farrell from the stretch. The pitch to Glenn Beckert, a 1-6. That's a single into center field. Base hit for Beckert. Kessinger rounding. Win a 0. Kessinger 15, 2 out, 17. He's coming. The throw from Jimmy Wynn. He's in there. So an RBI single for Beckert, and the Cubs reclaim the lead. Phillips with good speed will take third on the throw. First and third, two down. Beckert will have to be held on, and here's Billy Williams. Becker to 13 held. Two to one Cubs, first and third, two down. And they've got their best hitter at the plate. Farrell, from the stretch, here it is, 6-7. He struck him out. Oh, my, what a clutch strike out there by Farrell to get out of the inning. Cubs settle for one on two hits and leave a pair. After three and a half, it is Chicago two, Houston one. Checking the endurance, Farrell is seven, fall only a five. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, Sonny Jackson will lead it off. Jackson singled his first time up today. Left-handed hitter. Fall gets the sign. Here's the pitch to Jackson. That's a 6-9 left-handed. It's a high fly ball to right. That's going to be a single, however. Jackson a weak. And he'll sell for a long single to lead off the inning. Let's look at that again. 6-9. Clean home run, but he's a W. That'll be a base hit. He will have to be held on. That'll make him a 13. And with nobody out, they're not going to try it just yet. Nobody's going to take the bat out of Jimmy Wynn's hand. Jimmy Wynn, the toy cannon, is basically carried this Astro Ball Club so far in this young replay. Fall staring in now from the stretch. The pitch to Jimmy. That's a 112. Ground ball to short, but he was held on. It's a plus. Base hit. Jackson rounds and steams into third. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Tying run on third. Jimmy Wynn, 15 minus 4. He'd be an 11, so they won't need to hold him on. Thanks to Bill Fall's excellent hold. Gentile will be the hitter. Now how are we going to play it? Tying run at third, but it's early. Gentile, a very slow runner. They're going to be back at double play depth. They'll give up the run to get two outs. Fall now working from the stretch. The pitch to Gentile. It's a 1-4. Grounder to second. Beckard has it to Kessinger. Back to first. Double play. The run will score, but that's what they wanted. The 4-6-3. Two down, base is empty, and it's Rusty Staub. So tie a ball game. Here's Staub now, 0 for 1. Fall gets the sign into the windup. Staub is a 6-8 left-handed high fly ball to right field. Backing up is Brown to the track, to the wall, leaps at the wall, and it's gone. Holy crap, can you believe that? I gotta look at that again. Six eight, left hander, one to two, and he rolls a two and Rusty Staub with a home run. 
I think that's his first home run of the season. It is. He's got 17 RBIs now. But for Rusty Staub, his first home run. He hit 13 in real life that year. So that was probably overdue for Rusty. And the Astros take the lead 3-2. Two down, and here's Astrobani. He struck out his first time up. Let me reset this here. For some reason, I can't see the whole dice tray on my screen. I'm going to scoot it in just a little bit. There we go. Here's Astromani now. Follow the windup. Pitch to Bob is a 612 right handed grounder to first base X. That'll be Bacabella, 3E7. Here's the roll on the play. It's a 7 error rating. A roll of a 7 on an E7. Bacabella has a nice stop, picks it up. The race to the bag. He's out. 3X side retire, but two big runs for the Astros on three hits. And after four innings of play, the Astros lead it 3-2. to two. Both starters a little wobbly, but they're hanging in there. A lot of men left on base so far. We go to the top of the fifth, it'll be Santo, Brown, and Bacabella for the Cubs. Ron Santo, 0 for 1 with a walk. Turk Farrell staring in now, sign from Bateman. Here's the windup and the pitch. 3-9, he walks him. Santo walked for the second time today, this time to lead off the fifth. Not a threat to run. And that'll bring up Byron Brown. 0 for 1 with a walk. Watch the fourth walk issued by Farrell. Now from the stretch, he delivers to Brown. 6-5. It's a high fly ball to deep left field. Backing up is May. It's gone. Home run Byron Brown and the Cubs reclaim the lead in a seesaw battle. Oh my goodness. Let's look at that again. 6-5. Home run to 15. Brown has the power. The roll is a 6. Sano scores ahead of him. And just like that, it's 4-3 Cubs. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is fun, you got to admit. <laughs> this is almost too much fun. And here's Bacabella now, still no outs. One for two today. Farrell into the windup. Here's the pitch to John. It's a 5-9, fly to right field. Staub drifting back. And he'll take it for the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up Randy Hundley. Hundley's one for two. Give me just a second here. I'm looking at. Oh, they took that. They took it down. They were showing the pitches by inning. That's Phillies Braves, by the way, on the screen with no sound. One out. Here's Hundley. Farewell to one. That's going to be a 2-9 right-handed. That's ripped into the gap in left center. That's going to roll to the wall. Hunley rounding, and Hunley is in with a double. So Hunley's two for three. Farrell getting knocked around a bit now. There's going to be some action in the Houston pen. Too early for Lee or Raymond. Long man today would be Ron Taylor, so he's going to start getting loose.
Oh, yeah, I hear you, Kenyon. One through two, and he gets it. And absolutely, Franklin. Yeah, hitters, hitters hated that mark. So Henley aboard with a double. One down, and here's Kessinger. Don Kessinger won for two today. Singled his last time up. Farrell trying to get it together. Here's the pitch to Kessinger. It's a 4-9 left-hander. Fly ball into left field. May has that one. And there's two away. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Fall. Fall, a 1-R. And here's the pitch. On a 2-6, struck him out for the second time today, and that will retire the side. Two runs for the Cubs, though. A two-run blast by Brown. And they take the lead back. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Cubs four, Astros three. So a seesaw battle. Cubs scored one in the first. Astros tied it with one in the bottom of the third. Cubs took the lead back with a run in the top of the fourth. Houston took the lead back with two in the bottom of the fourth, and the Cubs take the lead back with two in the top of the fifth. I would say that neatly fits the definition of a seesaw battle. And Houston will send May, Bateman, and Farrell to bat in the bottom of the inning. Lee May tripled his first time up. For Fall, his first inning of potential fatigue as he gets ready to pitch to Lee May. And here's the windup. And here's the pitch on a 1-2 base hit. And May's hot-hitting ways continue with a leadoff single. Now there's activity in the Chicago pen as Ferguson Jenkins gets loose. Jenkins was the long man in this game in real life. And here's Bateman now. Runner not held. Fall from the stretch now. Here's the pitch to Bateman. On a 1-5 single, two stars. May will round and head into third. And the Astros have it going on in the bottom of the fifth. And Jenkins getting ready in a hurry down there now. As the pitcher Farrell comes to bat. Four to three lead in the fifth. Bateman not a threat to run. They'll pull the infield in. Let's see what Farrell's bunning is. He's a D. He's going to hit away. Right-handed batter. Here's the pitch from the stretch on a 6-8. Oh, my goodness. It's a high fly ball to deep left field. Backing up is Williams. That's off the wall. That's extra bases for Farrell. Here comes May to score. It's an open double. Bateman can try to score. Phillips, a zero. I keep forgetting I've got him right there. A nine. No, he'll hold up. Bateman will hold up on the RBI double by Turk Farrell, and the game is tied. Holy cow. And here comes DeRocher. Fall is fatigued, and that's going to be it for Fall. So Bill Fall knocked out in the fifth. Four plus today. I forgot to write the records in. I'll do that now. Four plus innings. He allowed two, five, eight hits. Did not walk a batter. Struck out only one. And here comes Fergie Jenkins. Jenkins, a favorite of mine. Although you probably remember he imploded in that last game. Trying to get the save. 
So here's Jenkins now. Let's see what he's done on the season. His stats have been updated. He's been in four games in relief. He's one and two with an 8.22 ERA across seven and two thirds innings of work. Jack, I hear you, man. I hear you. And now with runners at second and third, the Cubs will pull the infield in for Morgan. Jenkins getting ready to go. Two to nothing Phillies in the real game right now. Somebody pitching in the bullpen. Okay, we're back to this one. Second and third. Tie ball game. Nobody out. And here's Joe Morgan. Jenkins. Infield in. Here's the pitch to little Joe with a 6-7. Swung on and missed strike three. What a big strikeout by Fergie. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Fergie Jenkins fans little Joe, and here's Sonny Jackson. Jackson's two for two today. They'll keep the infield in. He's an A bunner. Jenkins checks the runners. Now the pitch to Jackson is a 5-6. Ground ball to second with the infield in. Runners will hold up. Beckert to Bacabella, two down. Ho, ho, can Jenkins get out of this? He inherited a real mess, and here comes Jimmy Wynn. They're not even going to mess around with him. They're going to walk him. And I'll tell you what, for me to do that, for me to load the bases with an intentional walk, I basically don't believe in it. But Wynn has been so damn hot. Oh, my God, how can you not hear? If Gentile beats you, you just tip your cap. So here's the situation. Tie ball game, bottom of the fifth. Bases loaded and two out. Jim Gentile against Fergie Jenkins. The windup. The pitch. A 2-7. And he walks him to walk in a run. Oh, my goodness. Everybody moves up. Bateman will cross the plate. And it's 5-4 to four Houston. And the seesaw battle continues. And here comes Rusty Staub. Staub homered his last time up. He's 1-2. for two. Jenkins, a deep breath now. Gets the sign. The wind-up pitch to Staub is a 1-8. Fly ball into right. Playable for Byron Brown. He's there. And that will retire the side. But two runs for the Astros on three hits. They leave the sacks full. And after five complete, it's Houston five, Chicago four. And there's Jeffrey. I know Jeffrey's a Ferg's fan. I was always a big fan of Fergie. I remember as a youngster, I felt he should have won the Cy Young Award in 1971. Looking back now, you know, with hindsight being 20 and 20 at all, it, it's hard to argue with Seaver. Who did win it that year? I thought it was Seaver. I'm just going to double checking that. There's the category. It was Fergie. Wow. I better take some more new Riva. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, Franklin. I, but you know, I don't know. I think it was the right move there. 
Jimmy Wynn has just been so hot. Okay, it's five to four Astros as we move to the sixth. The Cubs will have the top of the order. Adolfo Phillips, one for two with a home run and a walk. And there's Jimmy Jam. Hello, Jimmy. Jimmy's for the Cubs. Farrell gets the sign. Here's the windup and the pitch to Phillips. That's going to be a 1-7. He struck him out. So Phillips down on strikes, and here's Glenn Beckert now. Beckert won for three today. Farrell, the sign from Bateman. Pitch to Beckert is a 1-6. Base hit up the middle. Glenn Beckert with a one-out single. He's two for four. And he's a star 16 stealer as well. Farrell a minus one hold. Bateman is zero, so that would be a 15 if he gets the lead. He'll have to be held on. That'll make him a 13. And he'll have to think about that a little bit more. 13, 13 for me is the tough one. Sometimes I'll go at 13. But I'll tell you this, I'll most definitely go at 14, and I will not go at 12. So 13 is kind of the, the dividing line, if you will. So Beckert will stay at first, held on. Here's Billy Williams, one for three. Taylor is ready in the Houston pen. From the stretch, the pitch to Billy Williams is a 4-9 left-handed fly ball into left field. Lee May backing up a bit, and he'll take it for the second out. And that'll bring up Ron Santo. Santo 0 for 1. He's walked twice. Ron Santo standing in from the right side. He has three home runs on the season. Farrell on the pitch is a 1-9. Grounder to third. Aspermani to Gentile, and that'll do it. 5-3. Santo retired. No runs a hit. One left on. And Fergie, of course, will come out for the bottom of the inning. Astromani, May, and Bateman do. Yeah, Bob Astromani is 0 for 2 today. Right-handed hitting third baseman. Jenkins staring in to get the sign from Randy Hudley. Here's the wind-up. And the pitch to Bob is a 5-7 right-handed. Swung on and missed strike three. A second strikeout for Fergie. One away. And here's Lee May. Lee May is hotter than hell right now. Tripled and singled today. The at-bat before that? Oh, hell, it was just a walk-off pinch hit home run in the last game to win the game for Houston. Jenkins in the windup. The pitch to May, 1-7. Grounder to second base. Beckert has it over to Bacabella. And they finally retire Lee May. Two outs, and John Bateman will be the batter. Bateman won for two today. Jenkins staring in. The windup, the pitch to Bateman, is a 4-9 right-hander. A triple on a 1, but on a 17, that will hold up in center for Tony Phillips to make the catch. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Ferguson Jenkins. So we're through six here at the Dome. Astros five, Cubs four. Holy cow. And now Farrell, a seven-inning starter, he's entering his first inning of potential fatigue. And he'll be facing Brown, Bacabella, and Hundley. So here's Byron Brown. Brown, one for two with a two-run home run and a walk. That gives Brown three home runs on the season now. As Farrell ready to work, gets the sign from Bateman. And it's going to be a 2-8, struck him out. So it's Castle or Outhouse for Brown today. A walk, a homer, and two Ks. 
And here comes Bacabella playing first base. One for three. Farrell gets the sign. Here's the windup. Bacabella is a 5-7. Grounder to second base X. That'll be little Joe Morgan. A 3-E-30. Morgan to his left. Here's the play on a 7. He's got it. Flips over to first base. Two down. So 4-3-X. Bacabella's retired. Two down. And here's Randy Hundley, the catcher. Hundley, also the Cubs RBI leader, and he's two for three today. Farrell staring in to get the sign. Here's the windup. The pitch to Randy Hundley, a 2-4 comebacker. Farrell knocks it down, picks it up, flips to Gentile, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Turk Farrell. And greetings to Sports Time Machine and hello, Ben. You know, seeing Ben reminds me of something. I wanted to throw this out to the chat. I'm thinking of changing my game time starting next week from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. to accommodate Ben. Ben Witt's there, who won't be able to tune in until 1.30 starting next week. I've already had a couple of guys say that's perfectly fine with them, but I'd certainly love your input on that. Also, since we're stretching for the seventh, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. It means so much to me. I tell you, this is so much fun. I'm going to turn the heater down. I just kicked in. I don't need that today. Hang on a second. There we go. That's better. Okay, where are we? Bottom of the seventh. Fergie Jenkins, you bet he's going to come back out there. And the Astros are going to send up a pinch hitter for Farrell. Farrell, a seven-inning pitcher. They feel pretty lucky to get the seven they got. And they're going to go to the bench. Farrell allowed three, four, five, six, seven hits, eight hits. Four runs, two home runs, one to Phillips, one to Brown. The walks is what really got him. He walked four. And he struck out three, four, five, six, seven. So actually a pretty good game for Farrell. You could make a good case for leaving him in. But they use Raven and Lee in this game in real life. And they're going to go to Claude Raymond. And let's see who's coming off the bench. Real life in this game. Harrison and Nicholson pinch hit. Yeah, let's go with Nicholson. Dave Nicholson will bat for the pitcher. Nicholson, a right-handed hitting outfielder. <laughs> I like that, Franklin. Let's see what Nicholson's done in the replay. He hasn't played. He played in 14 games. He's batting 341, 14 for 41 with a home run and four runs batted in. So Nicholson to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Nicholson versus Jenkins. And here's the pitch. That's going to be a 5-5 five, five high fly ball to deep left field. Backing up is Williams, and it's gone. Dave Nicholson with a pinch hit home run. Holy crap, can you believe that? That's Nicholson's second home run. So Nicholson comes off the bench and homers, and it's 6-4. to four. That's what I call pinch hitting. <laughs> that would be the first time I've heard that. <laughs> oh, you guys are too much.
This has got to be the best group of Stratomatic fans on YouTube, let me tell you. I feel very, very fortunate. Here's Morgan now. Jenkins, one thing about Fergie Jenkins, he was always right around the plate. Never walked anybody, but he did give up his share of home runs, and he was basically not flapped in the least by it. And here he comes to Joe Morgan. It's a 3-8, and he walks him. Well, let's check his endurance now. He's a four-rated reliever, so that's not a problem. A rather poor hold, however, with a plus three. Hundley a zero. That'd be 18. Morgan held on as a 16. The Cubs better get a lefty up. And they're warming at Bob Henley. Problem with Henley is he has a plus nine hold. <laughs> Well, that's not going to help anything, and Morgan's going to try for the lead, 16. He needs a 4 through 6. He's caught on a 12. He rolls a 10. No lead for Morgan. Here's the next pitch to Sonny Jackson. That'll be a 6-5 left-handed. Swung on and missed strike 3. Strikeout number 3 for Fergie. One down, and here's the toy cannon. Walked intentionally his last time up. He's 1 for 2 today. Jenkins staring in to get the sign from the stretch. The pitch to the toy cannon, 4-6 right-handed, double to 15. That's down for extra bases in the left center gap. Win rounding with a double. Morgan can try to score on that. Phillips a zero. Morgan a 15 to the plate. Here he comes. Here's the throw from Phillips. He's in there. It's a two RBI double for the cannon. And boy, you can see... Sorry, it's a one RBI double for the cannon. You can see why he was walked intentionally. This Jimmy Wynn just does not quit so far in this replay. So Wynn with the RBI double, and it's seven to four. So big runs here for Houston, big insurance runs in the seventh. I'm thinking about making a move here. Of course, Wynn will steal. Let's see what he'd be right now. He's a 15. 18 minus 2 held on. He'd be a 16. Well, he's probably going to steal anyway. Okay, DeRocher's coming out. That'll be it for Fergie. They're going to bring in the lefty, Bob Hendley. Genteel, do up, stab on deck. So Jenkins underperforming his card so far, for sure. So he came in there, so that's two and a third. Two hits. Two runs. Three walks, one of them intentional. And three strikeouts. So let's see, that's that means three, five runs charged to fall. And here's Hendley, the lefty. Bob Hendley. Let's check his numbers. In the replay, that is. He's their leading pitcher so far. Five games, two of them starts. No record, but a 1.35 ERA leads the team across 13 and a third innings of work. And thank you, Franklin. Man, I tell you what. I think I started in late September. I actually started the Dodger replay in September. Started the 66 in late September. I actually took these cards with me to Lincoln City, Oregon in September. I exploded the cards while on a short vacation.
And I thought, you know, when I get back, I'm going to fire this sucker up. Okay, we're ready to work now. Henley's set to go. One out, a runner on second. It's 7-4 to four Astros. Here's Gentile with Staub on deck. The left-hander staring in. Left on left. Pitch to Gentile is a 4-8. That's going to be a two-star single, and Jimmy Wynn will cross the plate. And it's 8-4, to four, and the Astros have busted it open here in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, and Sports Time Machine has one here. Check out Sports Time Machine. 2006 Cardinals will play the 1986 Mets. And that is the uh, Legends of Baseball tournament. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, STM. So here's Staub now. Three hits and a walk for the Astros so far this inning. Henley from the stretch. Here's the pitch to Staub on a 3-7. He pops him up on the right side. Bacabella, two away. And that'll bring up Bob Aspermani. 0 for 3 today, struck out twice. That was against right-handed pitching, however. Now facing a lefty. Here's the pitch. It's a 5-9. Grounder to shortstop X. That'll be Don Kessinger, a 2-E-40. Kessinger into the hole on an 18. He's got it. Long throw across, and that will retire the side. Nice play, Kessinger, to end the inning. 6-3-X, but three huge runs for Houston on three hits, and they leave one. After seven complete in the dome, it is eight to four Astros. Like I always do in the late innings with the lead, we'll look at the defense. May, well, he's due to lead off, so I won't take him out. Raymond's been ready, he's coming on. Raymond in the replay. This card hasn't played up to its ability either. He's been in 11 games. He's 2-2 two and two with four saves, but an ERA of 9 in 10 innings of work. And he'll be facing Kessinger, the pitcher's spot, and Adolfo Phillips. Super Teams League. There you go. That's what I was trying to think of. So here's Kessinger now, one for three. Claude Raymond to do the pitching. Here's the windup, and here's the pitch. That's going to be a 3-9. Grounder down to first. Gentile will take it himself. And there's one down. Son of a gun. I meant to hit, I meant to do the double switch with Hendley. Well, he faced most of the left-handed hitters anyway. Suppose it doesn't really matter at this point. Anyway, they'll set up a hitter for him. He ends up going just two-thirds, a hit. No walks, no Ks. Loosening in the Chicago pen. Let's see, I'm going to check... I'm thinking Billy Heft, who pitched in this game. Abernathy, the closer, though. I'm going to the usage display now. No, it's going to be Heft. Billy Heft will throw. And batting for the Cubs against Claude Raymond. They need to get somebody on.
Ty Klein will bat for Chicago. Klein with the best on base percentage on the bench. One down, left handed batter. Klein in the replay. Let's see what he's done so far. He hasn't played much. Five for 21, that's 238. And here's Klein. Raven into the windup, it's a 411. Fly to left field X. They found May, a 4E14. May sprinting to the gap. Here's the roll on the play. It's down for a base hit. May cannot get to it. So it's a single for Klein. Klein with good wheels, star 17. Raymond, however, a minus four hold. That would knock him down to a 13, not held. Trailing by that many, they will not hold him. And it will be up to Adolfo Phillips with one down. Phillips, one for three with a walk. Let off the game with a homer. Hasn't done much since. Raymond's staring in now. From the stretch, here's the pitch to Phillips. That'll be a 4-7 right-handed. Single on a 1, but on an 11. Line drive right into the glove of Sonny Jackson. So a soft liner right at Jackson, and that's the second out of the inning. And it will be up to Glenn Beckert. Beckert, 2 for 4 today. I don't know, Franklin. I'm thinking not today. Could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. You know I'd love to see it. Raymond, the stretch. The pitch to Becker, 3-5. Liner right into the glove of Jackson. That's two in a row right at Sonny Jackson, and the side is retired. No runs a hit, one left. And the Cubs are running out of outs. And they'll have a new pitcher in the bottom of the eighth, left-hander Billy Heft. Billy in the replay. He's been in seven games, no decision, but five innings and a terrible 10.80 ERA. And the card isn't that bad. Lee May will lead things off. Two for three today, left on left. The pitch from half to four, five, struck him out. So Lee May retired on strikes, and here's John Bateman now. Bateman's one for three. Half studying the signs. Here's the pitch to Bateman. Five, four, right-handed. Fly to center field X. That'll be Phillips, a three E nine. Phillips backing up a bit. He's on his horse now. Here's the play on an eight. He makes a running catch. Oh, my sensational play in center by Adolfo Phillips for the second out of the inning. And they'll let Raymond hit. Let's see what his hitting rating is. He's a one-hitter's card, so we're going to need a new card. There we go. Right-handed batter. Pitch from Heft 2-6. He struck him out. So Heft 1-2-3 inning. He strikes out a pair. And we're through 8. 8-4 eight Houston. We have seen Claude Raymond implode a few times, have we not? Well, we'll see what happens. The bullpen, of course, the weak link of this Houston ball club. And Raymond will have to go through the heart of the Chicago order. Williams, Santo, and Brown here in the ninth. Eight to four, Houston. Billy Williams, one for four today. Raymond gets the sign from Bateman now. Here's the windup. Billy is a 5-12 left-handed, a grounder to the pitcher X, a 3-E-16 for Raymond. Here's the roll on the play. It's an 8 error rating. It's a roll of a 10 on a 16, and he makes the play and throws him out. 
One, three, X, one down, and here comes Ron Santo. Santo 0 for 2 today. He has walked twice. As Raymond stares in to get the sign. Here's the windup. And the pitch to Ron Santo. It's a 112, and he hits him. Oh, my goodness. Santo drilled. He takes his base. That one must have got away with an 8-4 to four lead. I'm pretty sure Raymond wasn't throwing at anybody. Especially with Byron Brown coming up, who's one for three with a homer and a walk today. Brown could make it interesting. Raymond from the stretch. Pitch to Byron, a 2-4, swung on and missed strike three. And it's the hat trick for Byron Brown today. Sure, he hit that two-run homer. He's also struck out three times. And it'll be up to John Bacabella as the Cubs are down to their last out. Let's see if they have anybody. they got to have somebody better we can send up here. First base? Sure we can. Let's get Mr. Cub in at bat. Pinch hitting for Bacabella. Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks coming off the bench. Hey, it's fun, if nothing else, right? One on, two down, eight for Houston. Here's Ernie Banks now. Raymond staring in. Here's the pitch to Banks. It's a 4-7 right-handed single on a 1. That liner again, a soft liner right into the glove of Sonny Jackson. And that's the ball game. 8-4 to four in the final. Sorry, no drama, no drama time today. Seesaw battle, though, for six innings. And the Astros broke it open in the 7th. So 8-4 to four Houston, the final. The Astros improved to a surprising 13-9 on the season. The Cubs dropped to 6-13. Raymond worked two innings. He gave up one hit, no runs. Didn't walk a batter, but he hit one. One strikeout. Farrell picks up the win. He's one and one now. Fall takes the loss. No, Fall doesn't take the loss. He pitched four innings. I take that back. They had the lead four to three. Fergie takes the loss. Well, I'm not happy about that, as you know. Fergie drops to one and three. All in relief. Half to flawless inning with two Ks. So your totals on the game for the Astros. Eight runs, 11 hits, no errors. The Cubs, four runs, nine hits, no errors. And that's the final from the Astrodome as the Astros beat the Cubs eight to four. Thank you, Franklin. Thank you, Kenyon. And thank you, everyone. Let's see who's going to be our player of the game. I don't really see a clearer standout here. Staub had a big homer in the fourth, but he was one for four. Homer, walk. I'm thinking Jimmy Wynn, honestly. Two for three, an intentional walk. His two RBIs basically sealed the game here in the seventh. 
without an obvious standout, I'm inclined to award player of the game with the toy cannon. So your Chief Spokane Gary player of the game, none other than Jimmy Wynn. I don't believe Raymond gets a save. We'll see what the Windows game decides. Yeah, and I'm going to run that by everyone again tomorrow, too. Oh, and there will be a game tomorrow. Normally, I do not do a Saturday game, but once again, with Easter weekend, the family event will be on Sunday, of course, so I'll be home tomorrow. Hell, I might even roll two tomorrow. Nothing else going on. Anyway, the first one will be at 1 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. And that's going to be Cleveland at New York. John O'Donohue for the Indians and Bob Friend for the Yankees. So join me for that one. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Appreciate it, guys. Take care, everybody. Spokane Steve wishing you all a very pleasant good evening and a fantastic Easter weekend. Take care, guys. Bye for now.